Dude, honestly, it's like nothing. Oh, damn it, you sneezed. Rage. Absolute rage. Yeah. <laughs> it's so not worth it. Brick, brick, brick. You've made it to the next tier. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna add another five minutes to my video. That's an ad peasant fear. So tell us your story. Like maybe just walk us chronologically through like coming to Vegas and your whole, you know, building this awesome business online and now yeah. multiple branches of, of content. Yeah. So pretty much. So I grew up in New Jersey. That's where I'm from. And from a young age, uh, I always knew like I wanted to pursue video in some like form. Like I was a skateboard kid and uh, I was always, I was the filmer of my crew and that was like my thing. And so I pursued it in college and whatnot. And I always liked YouTube. When YouTube popped up, it was like more of a realistic way to break into like video and movies and kind of things. So that's what I always envisioned. And then, um, but I was always like, I, I had jobs editing. I was editing for different like businesses and other YouTubers. And skateboard and videos. Um, was that like most of the work you were doing? Well, no, when I was young, I was doing the skateboard stuff, okay. but then I pursued it in college, like video, and I tried to be a professional, you know, so. Okay. But I got jobs like for editing for other businesses and stuff. And on the side, I was like e reaching out to YouTubers, editing for them. And so that's how I was making money. And in the meantime, like I was trying to like make my own videos, but I never understood my niche. Like I would just make random like vlogs and try different things, but I would get like 300 views, you know, but I eventually met Greta. <laughs> we met and uh, she we met in New Jersey, um, but she had a job opportunity in Vegas and she asked mm -hmm. if I'd ever move there with her. And I said, um, sure, like, let's give it a shot. Why not? Because I was doing a lot of work like editing remotely. So we just kind of wound up in Vegas almost on a whim because of her. And it, once we, I was here, I made a random video about one of the hotels here and it got like 20,000 views mm, and then you discovered your a day. And so I'm like, OK, I'm going to do that again. Mm -hmm. So like I, I just started making videos about the hotels and stuff here. And that's how I, that's what kind of became my niche and, and my channel grew from there. What year so, was that? Do you remember? Yeah, it was 2020. 2020. It was right after when quarantine happened and yep. the casinos were closed for like three months and then they reopened. The first day they reopened, that's when we made the first yeah. uh, oh. hotel video. That's, that's pretty recent. Actually. That's incredible how yeah. many people I feel like I've talked to that started during quarantine oh. or like during the pandemic. That like was, was like golden the golden era time yeah. to start. Yeah, anything. I was so lucky because people were just at home with nothing to do. So many Vegas lovers were wondering what the heck is going on with Vegas. You know? yeah. There just wasn't like, enough YouTubers back then. Too many viewers, not enough creators. That's yeah. true. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. People were just like, also, I think Vegas shut down completely, like the strip for the first time since like the 60s mm. or something like that. Yeah. When the JFK assassination happened. So it was pretty historic and I was aware of that. Yeah. So I was like, OK, I, I mean, I can take advantage of this and like. You know, I know how to use a camera and YouTube and stuff. So. Right. Yeah, I did hear right. that some of the casinos didn't even have locks on their door because they were open 24-7 for their yeah. entire existence. Yeah. And then they oh, had to, like, really? go install yeah. some locks. <laughs> yeah, it so was a ghost town. Can we hear a little bit more? How did you two meet? And Greta, what were you doing before you and Popsy um, connected? So we met uh, because right after high school. So I grew up and lived my whole life in Italy up until I was 19. And then once I got out of high school, I wasn't really sure what what I was going to do. So I did an exchange program um, with a family in New Jersey uh, where I was an au pair, which is pretty much like being a nanny, but you also live in the family, you're hosted by them. Uh, so I did that for a year in New Jersey and that's where we met. How was that experience like, by the way? It was really cool. cool. I mean, I went through an agency, so it's safer than you think, you know, you like you're, you're covered. And Were you paid for that? Yeah, so okay. you do have to pay a small amount to participate to the program but then you get paid by the family like around two hundred dollars a week but which is not a lot but you do have all your expenses paid because you live with them right so it, it was like the best experience i could you know i could do uh that wasn't going to be super expensive and i was going to be able to save up some money and learn english at the same time because that's really english cool. was not all too good <laughs> oh that's awesome yeah. were you taking care of like the family or did they have a kid or uh, yeah, so they, it was a single dad uh, that has a daughter um, and she was seven at the, t at the time. So I was just taking care of her, which one child sounds like easy work, but it's really not <laughs> because all her attention was on me at all times. So right. I had to play with her all day. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was a great experience. I loved it. And then that's where we met in New Jersey. And yeah. 
You guys said you met yeah. on Tinder. Yeah, yeah it was Tinder. <laughs> oh, was it My Tinder girlfriend match? and I met on Tinder too. <laughs> oh, did you? Oh, really? Yeah, we met eight years ago, which oh, is wow. pretty crazy. That was like back when it was not cool to say you met on Tinder. Yeah. So yeah, like, no if her parents asked, like, how'd you guys meet? We're like, oh, you know, through friends. What did you? <laughs> both, <laughs> what did you both use for your opening lines? Like, what dude, I don't even remember. We just were like, oh yeah, we just met through friends, you know, mutual friends, and they were like, okay, cool. I had no but, line. I literally just said, hi, I'm Chris, like with a smiley face or something. <laughs> okay. I had no oh, line. smiley face. Like I want if I want. That's what did it for her. I don't want to have to be a, give a creative line and, a, and be witty. Like I want someone to just want to talk to me. <laughs> like I don't know. That's how I. I don't know. Well, that's fine. And, and it then, worked. It worked. So yeah, you guys definitely. moved to Vegas <laughs> for your job. job. What What were you doing at the time? And like, well, what was the pay like? You just came to a new city. Uh, it must have been scary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at the time, I was the general manager at the Tropical Smoothie in Connecticut, and that location they, the owners ended up closing that location so they offered to hire me they had three locations open in vegas so they offered to hire me here and you know he was working remote and I, we both hate the cold <laughs> yeah so we were like let's yeah. try vegas yeah, we were pretty sick of the back. cold i had always wanted to move to la um like because you know oh, because videography yeah, yeah. hollywood and video all land, that, yeah. right yeah. but it was so expensive i couldn't afford f to move there but when she said Vegas, it was like decently affordable. I could drive to LA if I needed to. So it kind of seemed to make sense. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, he does Rito, not like LA. Let him so tell the story. A fan. But um, so yeah, it just kind of, and I also, I always wanted to live in a warm climate, like she said. Yeah. Because like we grew up, I grew up in like the East Coast. It's just like, Winter it rains winter. like 40% of days. Yeah. So it kind of like bums you out, you know? That makes sense. And then yeah. when you guys moved to Vegas, how long was it before the YouTube took off? It was... How long? How long? A year and a half. Well, Two years? it was about maybe eight months from when we moved here till the time we made the you know you made the first hotel video that mm -hmm. did really good. Yeah. But you know, for it to become fully profitable and for you to leave your job was probably at least like maybe a year and a half. Yeah. Since we moved here. Okay. Yeah. Were you just doing editing gigs and stuff? Yeah, yeah. I was editing. So pretty much when I moved to Vegas. I was all like remote work editing just for YouTubers and I was editing for a couple of big YouTubers like uh, Karen and Nate they're like really big vloggers and I was editing their vlogs mm. um, and then Bitwit he's like a tech YouTuber and a, like one or two smaller ones but what was indirectly happening was like they were giving me raw footage and then I was editing it but I was learning how to like be a travel vlogger because I was getting all their raw footage right and, so um, you saw exactly <laughs> what it did yeah so like it taught me and I'm like wow like they really focus on wording and they do multiple takes and they make sure to always smile at the beginning of the clips. <laughs> you know, I was like, cause like every clip would be like, all right, Carrie, you ready? Or, and she's like, yeah, I'm like, so we are today. And that's when blah, I blah, learned, blah, blah. and that's and I when like, I learned well, all influencers are fake. Yeah. <laughs> right? No, it, that's my problem. I feel like I don't smile enough. Like when I'm vlogging sometimes, but I remind myself, gotta be like Karen Nate. That's fine. So you kind of have to experiment with a lot of different genres. It kind of took off as soon as you did your own thing because you had kind of isolated the market. Or how much? How many? How much experimentation did it take before you found something that worked? Um, none. Right away. Maybe. No. <laughs> no, it seems like it kind of was. Right. Well, we did a lot of videos back in New Jersey. And My first videos were all about skateboarding, and then I was, I got into like Casey Neistat and like Gary V and yep. like. And so and I you was said like, you used to work for Gary V as well. Yeah, I used to work for Gary V. But right before I moved to uh, to Vegas, I I was a videographer for Gary's company VaynerMedia in New York City. And so that was another learning experience because my job at VaynerMedia was to be like he, Gary has a, a videographer named D Rock, and he would film Gary and make like vlogs of his professional life. And I was doing that for other entrepreneurs. And so um, that was a lear another learning experience. Like I. I, I was vlogging like the CEO of Retro Fitness um, just a day in his life and it was just me and him right. and this guy's like hundreds of millions of dollars like I was I'm like 22 I'm like pretty not smart and I'm just <laughs> asking him all sorts of questions and stuff and he was pretty cool and so like that was cool uh, I learned a lot from that um, but I had always wanted to do my own thing obviously like my own YouTube um, and I like the, if I were to lock down the niche I always want to be a travel vlogger like to me that was the coolest thing because like my favorite YouTuber of all time is Casey Neistat and like oh, cool. the main thing I know he does like a lot of different videos but my favorite videos of his were when he was traveling right and he didn't even have to 
do anything that interesting. It just <laughs> yeah. being on the journey of somewhere that I couldn't afford to go to was like yeah. so interesting to me. He's a great mm-hmm. storyteller. Yeah. yeah he's, so good. He's, he's the best. And it makes me sad because he doesn't really vlog much anymore. Right. So I feel like as a YouTuber myself, like I need to, I need to carry that torch in a way. I mean, I can't be him, but like in my own way, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like I was learning as I was editing for my clients, I was learning and that helped me like make good videos. So. How much of the raw videos that they sent you was like cancelable material? Like, how much all really nice people. Or are they? <laughs> More than they should okay, be. That's fair. That's fair. All right. So then you did the vlog <laughs> stuff. And the first hotel just took off like crazy. How quick did you get monetized? So, yeah. What was the ad rate question. like, if you remember? Okay. So I feel like it was just like maybe like a month or two. And I was monetized. Wow. Ever and since the first hotel video? I met. Yeah, well, I remember my first YouTube paycheck was only like 150 bucks. So, but then the next month it was 2000. And so I was oh, like, oh my then. God, that was like, like mind single, blowing a money. Single month <laughs> that was insane that is. money. Because that's the money. I used to make $2,000 a month, like at my first job out of college. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm like making videos doing that. At and what point did you quit? Did your income have to meet or exceed what you were doing at your job before as you As soon quit? as it exceeded, that's when I quit. Okay. I know, like, I, I, I don't know. Like if everyone's following, listening, I know it's kind of confusing, but <laughs> but pretty much like when I quit, yeah. So I had, what I was doing was I had two solid clients, Kara and, and Bitwit, those two YouTubers. And I think I was making like around $3,000 a month um, between them. And then once YouTube exceeded that, I like said, hey guys, like my, my YouTube channels are doing really well and I need to go for this. So I'm sorry, but I can't edit for you anymore. And uh uh, yeah. You're like peace out and they did they offer <laughs> they were, you more uh, they were pretty nice actually yeah, oh that's nice. nice yeah did they like offer more to stay or were they like totally understand no they didn't they were just <laughs> okay see you later <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then that's the fair. next day there's posts on their social media like looking looking to hire a videographer i'm like dang like i got <laughs> replaced so quickly <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay. Oh, they had to move on. So replaceable. <laughs> so from the traveling videos that you do, was is most of the revenue coming from AdSense, like which is the views, or is it sponsorships? Do you have like other income sources through like affiliates, or how does that work? Right now, for me, it's like all ads from YouTube and Facebook because I post all my videos on YouTube and also Facebook. And Facebook is a little bit of a nightmare because there's so many issues with like Facebook system. Like you randomly get demonetized, and it's it's kind of frustrating but when it's working it's great you're making like yeah e- good money like doubling money there's just know, a but. lot of imposters on facebook that and facebook doesn't have the best customer service and yeah it's just really easy for somebody to take you know demonetize your page because they can report a few videos and you know trying to get in contact with facebook right. and get that mm. resolved is just and you've had to go through that a couple forever. times already so yeah. many times <laughs> For some reason, and what, you have to open up a ticket and then say, I yeah. actually own this content and then mm-hmm. it yeah. takes forever for, yeah. And it's much better now than it was a f- only a few months it's ago, getting better. But, it's definitely getting better. but yeah, just, there's so many people that just like make fake Pompsy slots mm. channels on, uh, on Facebook, Facebook and just post my videos. And I'm like, when it's working is the income 50, 50, are you making about the same on dude? YouTube? It's so confusing for the longest time. I was making so much more money on Facebook and then it became like even, and now it's, I'm making way more money on YouTube. It's yeah. interesting. But it's YouTube, ever since we got that page demonetized the first time, it took us about maybe a month and a half to get it back. And so that kind of killed, you know, the, oh, the, the Facebook portion. Yeah. Uh, so we haven't really gotten it all the way back yet. But mm-hmm. that makes yeah, sense. it's just kind of all over the place. YouTube is way more reliable, honestly. What yeah. made you guys pivot to slots? Because I feel like looking at both <laughs> your channels, you focus a lot more on the slot stuff than the travel yeah. channel. That's your new priority? Uh, yeah. Or I mean, 50-50? So the way the slot started was like, I'll, I grew this audience of like casino lovers, Vegas lovers, and uh, so I would do a lot of live streams and sometimes I would gamble on the live streams and people seemed really into like the slot play. So mm-hmm. for just on a whim, I was like, I'm going to make a, I'm going to film myself playing a slot and put it on my Facebook and see how it does. And it did like, ridiculously better than all my other previous videos like wow. so much better mm-hmm. and it, on one hand it was like amazing because it 
I filmed for 10 minutes playing a slot. I didn't have to edit and I just threw it up there mm -hmm. and it made more money and was more watched. But on one hand it was frustrating because like I work so hard on these vlogs and there's so much <laughs> effort oh, and talent yeah. and years of work put into that. Um, and people would rather watch me like press this button and gamble. That's interesting. Cause like, yeah. I know as a creative, you're probably way mm -hmm. more passionate about mm -hmm. making those more cinematic videos mm -hmm. the yeah. travel stuff i'm sure is a little more fun from time to time yeah, yeah. how do you reconcile that yeah. and like force yourself to you're looking at that dslr you're like a sweet low f stop <laughs> like i'd love to get some 4k footage yeah get that slow motion christmas tree pan <laughs> and you're just like nope just film the slots on an you? iphone yeah yeah mm -mm. it's 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 really hard like my main channel i've I, so I did so I did like every hotel in Vegas and I I felt like I was just like creatively like just like d like done like I I was burnt out I was burnt out that's the word I'm looking for thank you so smart <laughs> <laughs> but but then this but like my my income depended on on those videos so I was kind of like churning out these these vlogs that were like I wasn't too passionate about um, but because of money I needed money to pay my bills but then the slots kind of like like helped me a lot. Like I was like, I was able to just make these easy slot videos. I don't, they're just fun for me to make. There's no creativity in them. Like, yeah. so there's no, you know, so I could just do it without like caring. And so that really helped me. And I kind of pulled back on my original channel um, and tried to like figure out what videos I want to make that I'm passionate about. And then the slots are just kind of like on autopilot kind of thing. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it kind of really helped me. Um, What's the ad way. revenue comparison between uh, the travel channel and slots? Is it like a one to one? Is it like five times more? Like what's the? That's a good question. Is that? I mean, I think the slots make a little bit more, but not that much more. Okay. Yeah. So it's pretty similar. Do you know the? I guess RPM or the revenue per mil per thousand? What that number is, or like the CPM? S the CPM is around fifteen dollars. Fifteen. That's good. Yeah. It fluctuates sometimes, but. Okay. Yeah, and then I think. My travel videos were around like 12 ish or something like that. So they're pretty close. They're pretty similar. Yeah. 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 Are you guys like baller status in every hotel now? <laughs> <laughs> Not oh, really. Like, you mean like the tier? Like free yeah. food and all High that. Roller. Yeah. I'm, I'm like the second highest level in like all the, most of the places. Really? Something second like highest level? Something like that. Yeah. What, what does that get you? Like, what are like the typical benefits? That Dude, you honestly, see? it like nothing. It's so not worth it at all. Like, really? like I gamble tens of thousands of dollars a month and I get free parking. And like, <laughs> it's so stupid. I mean, it's useful for us, you know, yeah. but, and you um, get a nicer looking card. Piece we of definitely get some points can get like free dinners at times. And you know, uh, at certain properties we have a host. So even if you maybe don't have enough points to have a real free dinner, they'll still help you out. Okay. Yeah. But that's just like, so you it's have, not us you, because it's us. It's just any high food. roller. Will so you guys have your own host where, wherever you, you go? Uh, not at every single not, casino, but yeah. at definitely at least at like three or four casinos. Okay. How often do you guys most? talk to them? Do you, do, what do you ask of them? Like, yeah, what's it like having a host? The, the host thing is a it's relatively like a, new thing. Like we just started getting... People will just yeah. text me. They'll just get my number somehow. They'll be like, hey, I'm your host here. I'm like, okay. And then <laughs> You've made it to the next tier. <laughs> randomly. Hello. I've lost enough to be cool. For Usually them. I would say if, uh, <laughs> like if we know we're going to go and film slots like all day on Sunday or whatever, and I know which resort we're going to and we have a host, I might reach out and just see if we can get a free dinner. Oh, that's nice. So, yeah, something That's like the that. main or perk. Is yeah. there like a, a limit do they give you guys? Like, like they're like, oh, make sure to spend no more than this. Or they're just like, wherever you want to go. And they usually give you a limit. Like yeah. $400 or something like I that. I think so. Okay. Yeah. I guess it depends also which restaurant you go to. Cause gotcha. some, you know, some restaurants, a hundred dollars wouldn't really <laughs> be like appetizer. You money. Much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but some other restaurants yeah. you can easily eat for like one or $200. So it really depends. That on makes sense. Where we go. So in the last yeah. couple of months, we've had two big casinos open up here, Durango and Fountain oh, yeah. Blue. Um, what are your thoughts on the newest casinos? And I mean, they're pretty cool. I, I like them. <laughs> you like them? <laughs> no, I'm, I, it's they're exciting. Pretty good. Ever since <laughs> I moved cool. here. So since I moved here, Circa opened, uh, you have Durango, Fountain Blue, Resorts World, like these epic things. Like they're, it's exciting. I, and because I, the city grows, and I don't know, I I really I love to see it. You know, I love to see it. But like at the end of the day, they're pretty similar. Like they have slots there. You can see a show. Um, Do you have a favorite place <laughs> that you guys like to go to? We have a you have few an answer? favorites. Yeah, rank favorite? them. What do you like? What Top five. Top five. 
uh, like favorites for playing slots or just all just, around just, just all, all around. around well when is definitely my favorite by far yeah. when and when yeah, yeah very classy. um yeah when's the best we really we really do like going to resorts world because the food court is actually also really good and not just you know classic fast food right um the rain we've been going to durango a lot this durango's nice i like it's it. it's just open yeah, yeah they have a lot of new slots that we haven't seen other places too so that's pretty cool are you doing are you going to do hotel content there or have you at fountain blue and uh i haven't yet but okay we'll, we'll yeah. see because they're new yeah i've yeah i'm more interested in making like for my main channel to focus on traveling around because because i feel like um i just i feel like i've i do the same thing over and over again like yeah what can i do in this hotel i know i could show it it's a different hotel than the other ones in vegas but it's not it's like so similar in so many ways so i'm it's, more interested in traveling going to other like random casinos like in i don't know like switzerland or whatever what kind know? of content yeah. would you make if somebody just dropped like 10 million dollars on you and they were like hey like you can make a movie you can make a tv show you can just make oh, a youtube a channel question. like what kind of oh like God. just if it was truly about passion and you didn't think about the monetization really? at all <laughs> that's a great that's a great question oh man would you go back to skateboarding or oh no there's <laughs> okay. oh, no. <laughs> no no skateboarding videos are not only like the least financially like you can't make money with them but not only that they're the hardest videos to make ever because because you have to skateboard alongside them right yeah or yes something. and it then takes it, so much it's patience. dependent on the skater landing his tricks and like they can mess when i was a kid and filming those videos like uh you know, to land a good trick, sometimes it would take like 50 tries. So I'm filming like... It's like, over. dude, perfect. I forgot. You got to yes. like wait for the perfect like... <laughs> it's yeah. it's so hard. Yeah. It's Could tough. you imagine editing for dude perfect? That must be so annoying. <laughs> it must be like a thousand times the ping pong ball misses. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. They, they have a system. But it, yeah, but anyways, what would you do if you had... That's a good question. Control. It's hard. Like, I, I always want... Like, my end goal is to make movies. Um, so I, I would say maybe use those funds to create like a creative horror film or something mm. like that have you written a script or anything or would you enjoy i've written all sorts process? of stupid bad movies <laughs> what's it called what happens in, or is it a secret i mean i have different things okay but, but horror movie genre ideas. is what you like i like the horror movie genre because i feel like a lot of filmmakers can break out into that genre first because for me personally i could see the i could see the worst horror movie of all time and still enjoy seeing it just because it's kind of like a it's a thrill ride or roller coaster in a way like can you do you relate to that like have you ever seen a, a bad horror movie but you're like it's still fun yeah i could well, see that yeah only it's, bad ones actually it's like the, <laughs> I, don't, I don't like i don't like good ones good ones are too freaky if they're too real. <laughs> like i like well, to know it's a like little like ones. okay that's just some people and some puppets you know <laughs> but if it were to be a youtube channel like if someone gave me an unlimited budget to make a youtube channel it would probably just be like a travel channel because that's what i that's what I love, like uh, traveling yeah. the world. But right now, like for me, like I created a series, like traveling. I want to travel to a hundred countries to gamble, basically to place a bet in a casino in all these different countries. Um, and basically, it's checking both my boxes. Like my audience loves casinos, and uh, and then also like the travel thing for me. So it's kind of like a oh, mesh. That'd be cool. Yeah, that's a great idea. So we did. Well, we've only done two countries so far, but we're starting to get going that's so really cool, it's been cool. Yeah. how is like your mental health gambling and playing slots because i feel like <laughs> every time i talk to people with slot channels it inspires me and i'm like oh i totally want to do that i want to try that and then i went one time and it was cool i played a little bit but i'm like i don't know if i want to go back like the the mental health for me is like it's not as fun as it looks like yeah Unless you're winning, but yeah. I feel like that's not the reality yeah, most tough. of the time. It's definitely no. not the average. How do you guys feel yeah. about it? No, it's tough. I, I get so frustrated. Even <laughs> me, it's like part of my business. I still sometimes leave the casino after losing a ton, and I'm just in the worst mood. Really? You know, yeah. because I like I didn't grow up rich. Like I understand like losing two thousand dollars in two hours is not good. You right. Know? Uh, and it also makes you feel dumb. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but. It's tough, but um, I kind of have like a simple system. Like if on average I make say $500 for one of my slot videos, I, I try to only I have a budget of two or $300 per episode. So if I lose all that, I, I know I'm profiting on the video. So that helps me even if I completely get rinsed on the slot machine. Right. 
you know, but then on the reverse side, if I, if I win on that slot machine and then I also make money on the YouTube video, yeah. it's like a, it's like a high, it's you like know? a double win. Yeah. yeah. So either way we follow our budget and that's helpful for when, if we go and film and we just keep losing, at least we know, like it's still, it's still upsetting. Like it's hard sometimes when you film like six, seven videos in a row and you lose in all of them. But you know, you just know that you didn't actually lose money. Uh, if you if you stick to the budget, so it makes it better mentally. So do you have a spreadsheet <laughs> or something that. that you use to keep track of it all, or is it kind of just you just sort of know each day? Um, so you could tell them at the end of every month, like how we do it. Yeah, like you. So usually every time we go film, we have a budget that we try to stick to, but also at the end of each month, I'll go through like all the videos, make sure what our wins and losses were, and you know have a total for every month. So how much would you guys say you, you burn through or lose <laughs> monthly? I would say um, on average, it really depends on how much we gamble that month, because sometimes we'll do less high limit slots and sometimes we'll do more. But um, I would say usually it might be around like 10,000 in losses for the month. But there was one single month this year we were, we were actually up. Um, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we've had the slot channel for a year and a half, right? Yeah. Something like that. We've had one month where, where we were profitable. <laughs> one on month. Gambling. That's it. One month. It, and, well, that's yeah, I mean, it and that's how it is. That's just how it is. And that's because it, I won my biggest ever jackpot, which was 10 grand. Yeah. Whoa. We well, want, I won a major that was in the high limit room that was 6,000 and the same month he won a $10,000 jackpot. Yeah. So that, that's why that month we were that's up. That's your that's lucky incredible. month. What but month was on, it? It was September. So September is your month, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's like, we'll see if it's cyclical, you know? Yeah. But on a regular yeah. basis, yeah, it's not, I it's mean, you're, you're always going to lose. Yeah. See, even if it's like, even if the content that you get from losing 10 grand a month, it's, it's great as a business model. I just feel like mentally, I don't know if, like, I could do it. I'm like, I just lost yeah. 10 grand. Even though you yeah. know you made 30 grand, you're like, oh, that was tough. It takes a time. You had to see yeah. the ten grand go away, and the thirty grand shows up. Kind of. Yeah, you feel <laughs> losing more than you feel winning. I feel like, or like making it from social media. Yeah, I think that's a cognitive bias, right? Isn't I feel it? Like, like I think it people, is. yeah, we have a lot. Uh, totally. Tell, but yeah. Yeah. It's more painful to lose than it is to mm-hmm. pleasure yeah, to win. It's true, hundred percent true. But I mean, we do have some like runs where we have like we'll win like five episodes in a row. And it's just like, oh, yeah. yeah, it's like it yes. all comes in waves. Yes. We have right. like maybe three <laughs> sessions would do so good. And we're like, oh, my God, you know, next time we're going to get <laughs> just rinsed at the casino. Yeah, Because the other thing that's tough, too, is like the videos that we win on always do twice as good as the videos yeah. that we lose on. Interesting. Right. And I try to make the titles ambiguous so people click on and watch anything. But sometimes it's hard to do that. Um, and people can see halfway through the video. Oh, he's getting wrecked. Click off or whatever. So that's another thing. Like if we're getting super unlucky, not only are we losing on the slots, but like the videos and it's also not are getting less views and yeah. we're making yeah. less money. It's See, like, that's another thing that's extra that's terrifying for me because I feel like it's yeah. possible to just get on a lose streak mm-hmm. where it could last. Like I, I think Dan was telling us he had a lose streak that lasted for over a year no. and he got super depressed and oh his views were super gosh. down and oh it's like gosh. that can happen. And statistically it will someday. So it's, uh, yeah. it's terrifying to me. But do you guys manage it in a way where do you like invest your excess winnings? Like how do you treat the money that you do make and that you get to keep? Is, do you guys just save it? Do you guys? Mostly I, I don't, I invest a little bit, nothing too crazy. But my whole thing is like, so I have the, I'm a little different cause I have the two channels, you know? So right now I'm trying to invest the slot uh, profits and stuff like that into my main, ch- like my, my vlog channel. And I want to essentially get that going and that'll be the main ticket and the, the slots what do you mean inv- like how do you take that money and invest it like by much well, new travel, equipment right now, or is it about new editors or is it about traveling tickets yeah mostly just the traveling like um so oh, cool the, co- the cost of it's on a regular basis more yeah. expensive to make a travel video for us yeah. It takes a lot more time and effort, and it's mm. also more expensive. So, but it also improves your lifestyle, I guess, because it's kind of fun, and you get to oh, enjoy yeah. your youth and go do new things. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I feel like if I had a slot channel, all the winnings I would get, I would just keep just separate for the slot stuff because I know <laughs> one like of these months it's going to be like, I have a hundred grand excess, 
And then you have like three bad months and mm. there goes your hundred You could grand. become like Warren Buffett and then you could buy out a slot channel when they're on the losing streak. <laughs> I know, right? Be like, I'm cash rich. Do you need a little help? You could become one of those guys that borrows money. I buy the cigarette butts of uh, Yeah, it'd be like when you're having a down streak, you go to Andre for some extra cash. 8% interest. Dude, no problem. Yeah. But I guess the benefits of going to restaurants is cool and all that stuff. I guess you get to experience Vegas and mm-hmm. high roller style, yeah. which is fun. I think for most people... They should not. And I tell people when they they see me, they're like, well, "What should I play? What slots should I play?" I'm like, "None of them. Do not play <laughs> slots. It, you're it's you're gonna lose." Like I, when people ask me, I'm like, "You're better off playing roulette or blackjack. You have a way better chance at winning." Yeah. Um, if you're gonna way decide better. to gamble. You know, I've also also noticed that like slot channels and comments, they're overwhelmingly positive. Like people love to watch them. I don't know if that's true or just the people yeah. we've spoken to, yeah. but. How is like your guys' comments and likes to dislikes? Is, oh, yeah. Like what's like Comparing the typical the channel, comment? The what's like different? a typical critique? What do you guys see? Well, in general, like we have an, um, we have an amazing audience. Like mm-hmm. people just love me and Greta for some reason. They, <laughs> they, like they're so they're so supportive and like almost all our comments are so nice. Yeah. And uh, it's like it's unbelievable, honestly. But um, the main like negative comments are just like, because people have their own superstitions and how they like to gamble. Gamblers yeah. are very like uh, what's superstitious. The word They're like um, particular. Compulsive? Particular. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Oh. You need to. You need to. You know what denominations are? Denominations. Like on a slot. Mm-mm. Like uh, so you can basically. Like credits. Yeah. Like you can, what the credits represent? Like one cent, five cent, yeah. ten cent. Basically, you can you can control how much you're betting. So like the lowest denomination is a one cent denomination. Okay. But you can like choose a a higher one, like a one dollar denomination. So you're betting more, basically, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of people in the comments think like, cause we'll stick on the same denomination, one cent, and then for the whole episode and we'll lose. They're like, this guy's an idiot. He should have went to one dollar denomination after the third minute. He doesn't know what he's doing. Like, that's what they, as but though in, that changes your odds or something. It's yeah. worth Everyone doing. Everyone has though. their own right. opinions I mean, on, how, a lot of people also, which I don't agree with, think that you need skill to play slots but you really don't yeah. like somebody who knows nothing about slots can go and put money in and press one button and win the grand you know what i mean yeah mm-hmm. see but, so i got tricked into this recently oh i didn't too. know if we were gonna <laughs> expose you or not yeah yeah you can expose me so andre I- was playing the carnival grand game you know and there's that point where you get to choose it seems like a choice where the <laughs> ball is gonna bounce around and go into i the slide. swear <laughs> i would press a button and Sorry. it would drop right when i pressed it yeah it was like, <laughs> and it was like I, a carnival game but he was choosing the moment and where i like, oh, won yeah, yeah. i won like three or four of those in a row and yeah. it was crazy yeah. and i was like oh i'm so good but to be clear i, <laughs> to be clear, I thought it, at, at that time too i was like dude if that game comes up i'm definitely gonna see if andre can help me bank it off the wall <laughs> the way he did and then only later as i started learning more about these games that i realized that like, no matter where you drop that it's fake they're pre influence. pre uh, determined it's yeah. going to just yeah. Yeah. figure out wherever you bounce it and make it go in the right thing and i was like yeah it's just like when uh, you get those jackpots where you pick which progressive you're going yeah. to win yeah it doesn't matter which one you pick. It's just going to show you what the machine is going mm. to give you. You know what right, I mean? This guy, Matt, right. behind the camera, he was playing that one where like the uh, fireworks build up and he's like, dude, I can't leave the machine. It's almost to the top. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and at that, at that time, and you know, at that time, it just felt like, yeah, probably, dude, like that one's a hot machine. But I machine, feel like but most people don't know that. And no, they I, don't. They're designed it, took, to, it took me a minute. They're designed Even though way, you know sure. it, even today, like I know that it doesn't matter what the screen looks like it still gives you the impression that it does matter right as yep. much as you know it it still makes you feel like oh but maybe yeah. if i put another hundred dollar in i will get that bonus right. you know and that video game it's like the same thing like, like uh at the roulette table they have that screen that shows you like the recent history oh uh, yeah and it'll oh, be yeah, like i've heard about that 10 blacks you know the last 10 spins were all black and then it'll, people will think like oh my god that means it's got to be red reds do right but <laughs> that whole screen is no. is it makes people lose a lot more because that stuff doesn't matter because every everything is, is independent mm-hmm. yeah spins and yeah. yeah and statistics it's one of those things we talked about or like i had some statistics in my background but it was flipping a coin if you flip it 10 times and it was tails every time it really feels like it's going to be head heads that that 11th time and mm-hmm. it just is still 50 50 odds <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah you know what i mean yeah. like yep. it's still a coin flip like you got to remember that what's yeah. your guys like average bet that you place like what's the i guess the domination like you were saying uh, we usually bet around five dollars per spin. That's so, a lot. Oh, that's 
that's not that. It's not that. Really? I mean, it's not that. That's like ten cents. Usually, it's like a max bet on one cent denim mm. on the regular floor. So yeah, I would say on the regular usually. floor. What like is, on, like, like not, not in the high limit yeah. room. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Peasants here. <laughs> <laughs> You're no. like what regular floor? <laughs> <laughs> I'm always on the regular floor. That's the only floor I know. <laughs> and you kind of came to that because you think it's the best for like entertainment value versus cost, or do you sort of vary it up and you just throw in some cheap ones and some expensive ones to keep the audience engaged or what's your strategy so this is our strategy so pretty much um like i said like if we earn around 500 dollars per video for example it's not <laughs> for the exact, example, not not the exact number <laughs> whatever my, whatever but anyway so like our budget in general is around 300 dollars per episode and then um so if we have a couple good episodes then i'll we'll do a couple high limit episodes where, where instead of investing 300 for that episode, we'll invest a thousand. And instead of doing five dollars on average per spin, mm -hmm. we'll do like 15 or 20 dollars per spin. Yeah. Every once in a while, we'll go a little bit more crazy and do like hundred dollars a spin for a few spins. Not very often, really, but sometimes. They're just like Every special once videos. We also switch yeah. around our bets a lot, like throughout the episode. So when we when we you know have the 300 dollar budget and we play a slot on the regular casino floor. We might start with a max bet of five dollars a spin, but we just, we really just switch around a lot. So it makes it's, sense. It's different. Yeah, I was doing three dollar bets, and I was like, man, my hundred dollars is disappearing in like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's sad. it was pretty bad. Yeah. So five dollars, yeah. I feel like, is really fast. No, and I feel it's like, like and I feel like if you're slow to hit that button, the audience is like, whoa, I'm going somewhere. That, like, I know, they can right? Tap it faster. Yeah. Too. Seriously, I don't feel like you get because there's a pace that you have to be. You have to be like, all right, hit. All right, hit. And it's like, if you I try to like... I think sometimes people get like upset because we go a little bit too fast, actually. Oh, too fast? Because they don't have sometimes. time to to see how much we won. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and so I feel like you have to find the right moment mm. where people can see how much you just won, but you also don't wait too long to press it again. Right. Yeah, because if you wait yeah. and you like discuss how it yeah. went and stuff... They're <laughs> oh, like, dude, I'm I out. wait for the whole animation of the coins. I'm like, I'm, if this goes to 100, I'm going to wait the whole five minutes. <laughs> Be you like have to enjoy clock here. Yeah, because I, I know you can press thing. and skip the whole animation. I'm like, yeah. I'm not skipping. This is going to add another that's, five minutes to my video. Yeah. That's an ad. <laughs> <laughs> do you, no, do you play slots fun. often? Or no, just... I've only played, I think, once or twice in my life. And that was the one wow. time I played. Do I, have, I have one video of Andre playing. But it was an amazing video. You yeah. were, he was yeah. up so, so much. So like, oh, really? if, he, if, he, if Andre quits now, he's like one of the few people to like take. Beat the casino. To beat the casino. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we, we both went in with a hundred bucks. Yeah, we both went in with a hundred bucks just to like feel it. After we had Dan on, we were like, what is going on with this genre? You know, so we went and we played. <laughs> and my hundred just went. But yeah. Andre went. <laughs> Do you, guys have any, like, do you guys have any theories for like why slot channels are doing so well right now? Is it anything particular? Okay, so I one of the one of the videos that I enjoy watching, like the genre of videos, is poker. I like I like watching poker. I don't play often myself, but I like watching poker. There's something interesting about watching someone else gamble. Uh, and for me, I enjoy watching poker. Um, it's it's more of a game than just a slot. But for other people, people they just like slots, you know, that's their form of gambling. Mm -hmm. And one of my friends, he explained it to me because I was perplexed why people like slot videos too before I did it. I didn't understand quite why. Um, but one of my friends said like, there's a, a payoff in every video. Like, okay, he started with this amount of money. What's he ending with? So it gives people more of a reason to watch through. Oh, a natural mm -hmm. story. Yeah, it's like kind yeah. of built story. into the slot machine. Exactly. And so then I realized like, wow, like, I get that. But the other thing is... um. Some people just love slots um, and they don't have that much money. So they're able to watch as much slots as possible without risking their own money. Mm -hmm. you know? Right, right. So could you imagine like if you yeah. took all the losses and like even if it was like a really bad streak? Because I've never seen anyone in the slot community sort of integrate their personal lives into it. Mm -hmm. But like how crazy would it be if you were like, oh, I... You know, with this money that I won, I invested in this. Or like, if you're losing, you're like, I lost my house this week. Oh, <laughs> no. Going back for more. <laughs> like, I guess you really the can't. Desperate slot man. <laughs> Dude, or like that be the name of the channel. <laughs> you can't lose. That would be I such guess. a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just every month, you're like, I don't even care if this guy loses because he's gonna lose something. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> have you ever yeah. seen anybody on a machine next to you freak out be like stupid mother ever whatever like just like any crazy pissed. stories you guys yeah, or like big yeah big wins and biggest losses that you've seen experienced been in the casino when it happened <laughs> or maybe yeah. even experienced yeah. yourself i i mean there was one time this is not a slot story is that i was playing blackjack in atlantic city and there was a guy who was clearly oh, yeah. a little on some type of drug that made him more energized. That's a white powder. <laughs> <substance>. <laughs> <Got> <laughs> that, it. that he was right next to me and he was just like banging the table, like just banging the table, screaming. Oh my God. Like that, like, that guy was nuts. <laughs> brick, brick, brick. That's what he was screaming. You're right. I forgot yeah. the word. He was like, brick. He, would, he was the classic like blackjack player that gets upset if people who were playing before him, if they didn't play by the book and like ask for a card, even though they weren't supposed to, or the other way around, and that messed up his play. <laughs> right. Oh, he's like rage, absolute right. rage. Yeah, like, Something <laughs> like superstitious based. Or exactly. It's like, yeah, just. Well, because in blackjack, there's a by the book. Like, like uh, you're supposed to do this. Right. At every situation, like the, the dealer has six, you have to hit. Blah blah. blah I've seen this. Yes, and someone's yeah. like, oh, that's the only reason I lost is because this idiot hit, and he was supposed to stay. Yeah, that's exactly. Right. Like they take I mean, they card, they have yeah. Yeah. they have a point though, because like in blackjack. Like all the other players at the table affect you, mm. so I get it. But this guy was going nuts, and then unless you go, for, and he, well, I guess yeah. And then when he 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 had lost all his money, and he was screaming at the dealer, and his wife was pulling like, away, <laughs> and it was it was bad. Oh, but, it was um, funny too because it was yeah. one of our friends' first time ever playing blackjack, <laughs> yeah, and we were at that. this table. So I was like, wow, that was a first grade. It's a great like, first great experience. First, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good first I was experience. Like, oh. oh damn it! You <laughs> sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> Did I like like one time at the roulette table? I saw this group of like five guys. They were just like look like bachelor party or something. They were just hi- amped up, hyped, and they this one guy's like, "Dude, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna drop two grand on red." They're like, "Do it, man! Two grand on red, two grand oh, on red." No. And so he goes to do that, and they're so skeptical. The lady is like, "Hey, just really quick before we spin this thing, can you sign like sign a little sheet of paper?" Like the pit boss came over, or whatever, just to be like, "Are you sure you're putting two thousand dollars on red right now?" <laughs> His boys are like, "Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it," and then he signs it, and they spin it. And it's no. black. <laughs> and they just like so quietly just like moved on. And it was like, it just felt like all this energy just like killed. Oh, and then sad, they just yeah. walked on. He didn't, he didn't cry or get upset. He just was like moved on. But there you could just feel that. Did pain. they give him a photocopy oh. of his signature? Stuff? No. And the, and the, poor, and the lady, <laughs> and the lady who was like running the machine just kind of was like, any more bets? Like she tried to just ignore it. It was just like so awkward. <laughs> oh but God. I just remember watching that guy. Cause if he would have won, they would have, his boys would have like blown up, you know, but they yeah. were just like completely silenced. The casino world's like, an interesting mm-hmm. world for sure. I, so I did, a, I've done a handful of videos through the years, like where I give money to random like people to gamble and one of the ones I did that was like a pretty fun good story and you can watch this video um so it was like the first person to find me on the strip I give a hundred or a thousand dollars to put on black um and this guy finds me and then uh we go to the the high limit room at Bellagio and he puts it on black and then he won and he's just freaking out and and his fiance is freaking out and they're like they're like oh we're gonna use this for a honeymoon to go to Disney. Like, thank you so much. That's so, awesome. So like, yeah, that, that, that was a good story. I try to think of like good stories for you guys and there's not, I don't know. That's, that's really one. cool. Yeah. You were like, cool. by the way, uh, the stipulation is 50% goes to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's what my dad said. My dad's like, Christopher, like, come on, like <laughs> you give him come a thousand dollars. If he wins, the least he can do is give you your money back. <laughs> and right. I'm like, I know, right? Like, like, no, no. No. I'm like, no, that no. makes me, it makes everything yeah, better. No, you've people. got your own thing yeah. going. It's nice. It made their day. It was awesome. That was cool. Because, yeah, I mean, you've also done streaming where you like walk up and down the strips. I mean, you've probably seen a lot of stuff there too, right? Just yeah, captured accidentally by just being out in public like that. Yeah, dude. It's, Vegas is a wild town for sure. I remember walking <laughs> down the, the strip from Bellagio, you know, that bridge between Bellagio and like, valleys mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there's a lot of or like i guess it's on the bridge that's closest to like where the fountains are yeah um there's a lot of people p- performing and like doing the hustle and like the, mm-hmm. the not the three card money the three shell game i don't know if you guys have seen those hustlers yeah and i remember w- one time walking and i was like oh man this guy could get caught because there's if, if the cops see you they they try to break up the operation and get arrested for that mm-hmm. so i remember walking and i was like dude if a cop sees this guy he's gonna get arrested so i'm walking and then like 30 minutes later i remember being on this bridge and just someone just shoves me and and runs right by me 
And I'm like, what the heck was that? And then a cop just runs right by. Oh, and it was, tackles was it the that guy? guy? <laughs> yeah, it was it the was dude. It was that same guy. It was that same guy. Yeah. He tackles him on the ground, and I'm like, well, there you go. That's, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. You called it in your the head. Because yeah. <laughs> that one's really illegal because it's truly a magic trick, right? Well, yeah, the, it's a scam. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they all seem like scams. There, I'm, I'm, surpri- so I'm, just, I'm surprised they're even regulated. They're just street performers, but I'm yeah. glad he got tackled. I'm surprised people fall for it and like play it. Right. Like, yeah. People still think like they have a fair shot at it. <laughs> I've seen that scam in, in, uh, I just I was in Paris once there. Par- I was scam. about to say Paris, like yeah. Montmartre probably. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right outside the Eiffel Tower. Like they're, they're just doing, that's the one with the three cu- buckets. Yep, right? yep, yep. And they, they, they have like someone that's in on it, like, pretend to do it and win yeah and then people are like oh my god like i'm gonna try this there's entire thing. families there that will like a, a group of six to seven people like they'll all huddle in and they'll act really loud mm-hmm. and get like that excitement going mm-hmm. which gets people interested and like what's going on over here and people are like yeah and they have like a stack of like 10 grand and they like pretend oh like they gosh. won wow. and that draws people in it works it's That's like that yeah. that it's dopamine, weird, that level yeah. of excitement that everyone's like, I want to get in on this. Well, and especially because you're like, I can keep an eye on those three things, and if he won, then I can win. Of course, yeah. it seems so. But so that's re- easy, yeah, I see. Yeah. That's really a lie, though. That's really. But you know what's interesting to me? Like statistically, yeah. having talked to a couple of slot channels, I feel like a small a small portion will probably survive in the long term because I feel like if the ad revenue doesn't outpace the losses, like at some point. Anything that's gambling long term has to like go down, right? I mean, I don't know. Like, can it be possible that someone could just be doing this for the long term? I don't know. Like the videos? Yeah, like if, if there's yeah. like a really bad loss streak, and I imagine like statistically speaking, that should happen to most channels eventually. So what I do, and I don't think other slot creators do this, is I basically make compilation videos, and I so I, I upload twice a day every day yeah one is a brand new video one is a compilation video and um a lot of times i'm like repurposing old wins and stuff and so oh, that's smart yeah. so it's not just so because a lot of the viewers they don't even really know they just log on to their youtube and they see the new video pop up and they click it they don't really think twice about what it is right so i kind of disrupt that like if there's a losing so, so you're streak. able to basically recreate games without necessarily playing them multiple times just by repurposing the videos yeah. exactly also just, like yeah. most of the audience is not like they will have watched all of our videos right so th- i'm sure there's yep. a lot of like older videos that were never watched by like 60 percent of the audience so right it's kind of nice to do the compilations too some people have their own like some people really like buffalo some people really like other right, slots so if right. we do like a two hour of buffalo slot play it's good for us because we re- repurpose the content and we don't have to spend more money for it yeah mm-hmm. but also like a lot of people can just watch that video they get all their yeah. buffalo slot play and you know do you, so you think like. you tag the if it's a buffalo machine you put that in the tags so that people know to find it and then do you find a lot of people come through search like they're searching buffalo slots yeah, like, and then you come up yeah. or is it mm-hmm. oh. yeah dude some of my, my highest viewed videos on my slots channels are all the compilation videos right like the best of 2022 the best two hours of like bu- playing buffalo mm-hmm. slots an hour of this slot, that slot. You know. I also, this might yeah. be mm, just smart. me thinking yeah. it. I'm not sure if it's true, but I feel like a lot of s- people who like watching slot play like just having it in the background or going to sleep to it. Yeah. So like the, the longer compilations, yeah. they, they're kind of fun. You can have yeah. them in the background, not really pay attention, just kind of look every now and then. Here's a dumb idea that I just, re- I just had in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Title for the video, watch me lose for three hours straight. <laughs> Com- <laughs> Com- compilation oh of help all you, the help losses. Help you fall asleep. I promise <laughs> you, I will make that video tomorrow. I'll send it to you, and we'll, pro- we'll track the progress of okay. it. Okay, <laughs> do it, do we'll it. put that on Andre's That'll main channel. Do it. That'll be good. Yeah, do it. I wonder how many people will click on it. I'll give you your cut if it does well. I guarantee you it would probably do well. Like a compilation of just... You think your life sucks, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to feel better about yourself, yeah. watch this video. Exactly. <laughs> what, I sh- what I could do is tally up the total number yes. I lost in that video and put yeah. that in the title. Exactly. That oh, be, oh lost, yeah. like losing this much. Take all yeah. your biggest losses. That's that not would a bad be idea. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I'll give my mom a my heart attack. My consulting rate that. is... <laughs> <laughs> I have a bookmark to the Starship Enterprise white noise and it's like 12 hours long and i'll listen to that sometimes to go you to do? sleep yeah i bookmarked yeah. it wait oh, what does it sound like thing, it's just 12 yeah. hours of white noise but it sounds just like the engine room on the starship enterprise what is the white noise like like uh, the static of a tv 
Mm, yeah, white noise is like the static of a TV, but this is the sound of the engine when you go into pulse overdrive. How would I know what that sounds like? Well, if you watch Star <laughs> Trek, you just hear like, engage. <laughs> mm. <laughs> no, oh, I like okay. this. I listen to like rain, rain falling. Rain falling. Sometimes okay. to sleep. Mm -hmm. But lately it's been a comedy. I just fall asleep to jokes. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> That's what I Dude, like. Dude, there's another great video, which is, I think, five hours long, and it's every minute by minute since the Titanic hit the iceberg to when it sinks. And you'll hear, and like, it'll just what? be like, it hits the iceberg, and then everything's just like fine for almost all five hours. And then at the end, it's like, you just hear screams. No, you wake no. up to screams wow. at 5 a.m., you're like, <laughs> yeah, no, it's not, it's not good for sleep. You're right. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, yeah, it is. A good it's idea, peaceful man. until you wake up. You're like, what was I dreaming about? <laughs> so, what kind of stuff are you watching on YouTube? Like, like I want to hear both of your like. What do you do yeah. to wind down when you're on YouTube specific specifically? Go ahead, you go. Um, to be completely honest, I just love watching TV shows, and I'm oh, so also you're like you're pretty much Netflix. You don't yeah, do YouTube. Like, <laughs> who, I'm just a chronic like rewatcher of shows. I have like. Three or four like sitcom shows that Ooh, I would one? just oh, keep watching. Like forever. Friends and stuff like that. Or? Yeah, like Friends is one of my favorite. I've been trying not to watch it for a w <laughs> because I I literally know every every sentence. Do you really? Yeah. I've never seen it. No, friends? stop it. Yeah, I've never seen it. It's really good. It's good. Yeah. But yeah, Friends okay. is one of them. It's good. Because um, you, what do you like about it? Just calming, or just how it's all happy and like New York just seems like safe. And I don't. I j I guess it just makes me feel. I, well, obviously, I really like the show, but. I just like that I can have the show in the background and I already know what's happening. Like it's comforting that I know what's happening and I can just also do mm. a bunch of other things. Like if I'm cooking or cleaning or whatever, I can have it in the background and I, I don't really have to pay attention because I know what's happening. There is know? something about the Friends back catalog that is like unbelievably profitable. Like this, this is like one of the most viewed TV shows since it yeah. aired yeah. ever. And mm -hmm. it sold all the DVD boxes. It was like the top seller. And then it's like replayed all the yeah, time. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And like when Netflix had it, it was like the main thing, number one thing they had for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just a great feel good show. Yeah. It what are the is. other, what are the other ones? Um, I like Desperate Housewives, which is on Hulu and like uh, Big Bang Theory is really good. Yeah. Quite a few. We watched Seinfeld. We definitely watched that at least three times. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he watches a lot of YouTube. I like YouTube <laughs> a lot. What's your go to? What, yeah. What does your sub main subscriber look like? Or what is your like for you page it's, look like? It's definitely changed through the years. Recently, I've been watching a lot of um, I like I love this uh, vlogger, Simon Wilson, who's a travel vlogger. Hmm. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so he's always in there. And then uh, I watch some some poker content like high stakes poker. Oh, nice. Um, that's it's more casual. Like you can, you know, you can just watch any random video. It doesn't, you know, you don't need to see the most recent ones. And then, um, oh, you know what's another good one? I, there's too many. You, <laughs> you ever hear of Gas Station Encounters? No. Oh, oh you know that <laughs> one? So I good. don't. There's so many great YouTube channels out there. It's actually what? insane. But Gas Station Encounters is one of my favorite channels. And basically, it's this, it's this guy. I don't remember his name. But he works at his like family's gas station, like convenience mm -hmm. store, and he works there as a clerk and does whatever, whatever else. But he has like all these cameras set up, and anytime someone steals something, because they steal he, all the time, they get right. like people steal like candy bars and stuff. So like he'll f catch them stealing it while he's working on the camera, and then he'll take his phone, start recording, chase them out the door, and say, "Hey, can I curse or no? Go for it." <laughs> Hey, f her, you dumbass! <laughs> like, 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 and they'll be like, "What? Like, I saw you steal that fucking candy bar, you piece of shit! You're gonna wait here for the cops to come." And it's just like the most satisfying thing ever. And the cops never come; they don't do anything. Yeah. Okay. But he's able to like recoup uh, money from like the oh, losses the stolen money, stolen from, money from the channel. Oh, and, and probably he, super chats dude, and stuff. Like, super, sorry, you lost that candy bar. He's super funny too because the whole because he puts all the footage from while they're stealing, and he does kind of like a. Uh, like a, like voices from oh, he does, what yeah. he thinks that they're thinking, you know. Right. So he's like super funny. Yeah, oh, that's so hilarious. Oh, so, so he's like, good. I'm a dumb person and I'm gonna he's, steal this candy bar or whatever. Yeah, he's like, oh, I'm gonna check the counter oh, to make sure nobody's looking. And <laughs> have you heard of that? No, you gotta watch it. That's he great. he like raps in some of them. He has really creative, funny ass <laughs> narration. Yeah, yeah. you awesome. should probably bleep that out because a lot of really fun. a lot of my audience is older and they get upset if I curse. <laughs> Do you curse in your slot videos? No. <laughs> Okay. How much does he curious. curse in his real life? <laughs> he doesn't curse much. I, I curse 
You're the cursor? Yeah. yeah. You're the cursor. You're like, Greta, calm down. Not like, in the videos, yeah. but I can't help it. I don't know. It's so fun <laughs> discovering these little genres. Actually, the first time we booked the slot channel for this podcast, Andre's like, this exists? Like, yeah. <laughs> like slot? Shocked. And that wasn't that long ago. Like, yeah. Yeah, Andre's like, this, this. I was shocked. I was like, this is crazy. This yeah. Is, uh, I, so. I would, if you would have told me I'd be like a slot influencer, like any, <laughs> before two years ago, at any point in my life, I would have never mm. believed you like, think poker, poker might be next thing. it sounds like you have a lot of enjoyment no of i that stink genre. at poker i stink at you poker. just want to watch i've accepted that i'm not good at poker <laughs> i don't have the patience for poker right like i'll be locked in for like two hours and then i get so bored i just play any two cards and i i bluff my my money and i'm so i'm so mm. mad so i just <laughs> yeah, don't it's a play. marathon that's a tough game to it takes do it. a lot of patience. the players out here are s that's all they do. Their whole life is poker. So they're so dialed in. They're so patient. And they're just, they never make mistakes. They're like robots. And I'm just. They like, also only play their, like, the three best hands you can have. And yeah. I can't compete with them. <laughs> yeah. Right. It. It's too tough. Jeez. It's, that's hard. Do you guys play poker? Ah, man. Yeah, not, not me. I know the hands of poker. I don't know <laughs> the strategies. Like, I don't know <laughs> how people are able to last longer than other people. I'm like, how. Does this work? I don't get it. <laughs> so. It's amazing. You grew up in Vegas and you're you're so yeah. not ingrained into gambling. No, it's almost no. easier. You can like that's learn good, to though. ignore it from an early age. It's yeah, interesting. Yeah. The slot machines now I'm noticing in a way I've I've walked past them forever and I've never mm -hmm. looked at them. And now I'm like, yeah. oh the goldfish game, like <laughs> oh like a moolah to the moon, such cool animations. But like oh, no. that was never <laughs> me until it's I beginning. until I started thinking about them and playing them, you know? Wait, so but you're doing the slot stuff now, right? Eight, eight subscribers. I don't know. That's yeah. awesome. But okay, yeah, I have a channel. How, how's it going? Curious, check me out. <laughs> um, I, f fun so far, but I got to feel out if this is going to be forever or not. I don't want to. Like, but how? I don't want to be like, look, I'm going to for sure do this, but okay. it's fun. Okay. Well, it's one of you know. Sometimes the clothes make the man. Like I'm sitting down, I'm learning. I'm st I'm that guy that reads the instructions before he plays, oh, yeah. and I'm like, all right, guys, I think we're looking for three of these, and then sometimes things happen, and mm -hmm. I. It's I just don't know why it happened. I'm I like, was like that a line so win? I was like, what? why did that turn into that thing? You know? <laughs> it's so hard to narrate it sometimes. You're like, I'm in Pristy's yeah, button now. And then it's yeah. like, cool. I'm like, yeah, I don't know what I'm looking tips, for. What are your tips for Andre yeah. and I? I like, like, how I'm do you keep narrating the whole How do you narrate without, stuff? Uh, do you catch yourself being like, I've been quiet for like three minutes. Nobody's entertained by me. What should I say? <laughs> I know. It's yeah. tough. I'm, I'm not the best at that. I'm just kind of natural. Like, it's all about my emotions and if I'm winning or losing. Hmm. There's not much narration. I mean, we try our best to explain, like, we need three of these symbols or whatever, you know. Hmm. But yeah. I, don't, I'm, I don't, you got to ask, like, Vegas Matt for those tips. Hmm. He always has something interesting to say, I feel yeah. like. Some people just have that, gist, that gift of gab, you know. Yeah. yeah. I would exactly. say it's definitely easier when you're w when things are happening, you know, you're excited, you're yeah. you have things to say, you know, but the worst is when you have those episodes where just you get no bonuses, mm. you just go down the hole because it's like, what else are you going to say? Like, oh, right. let's get this bonus. <laughs> Hopefully right. we can get it. Like, right. come on. I've only had like, one comment on the channel so far, and it was like, this guy tries too hard. I already blocked him, oh. but it's oh, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like I only had one comment back to zero now that I blocked him. But it's like, no. I was like, I'm trying too hard. I'm trying to entertain you. Yeah, there's, Why a, there's a, a tough trying crowd too hard? out there. Some, some viewers are tough out there. Geez, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm just a guy. Yeah. Try my best. Like, what the heck? Like, you just lost money. Yeah. Like, channel doesn't make money. Give me a break. Like, I have, I have a, uh, I have a few moderators on my channel, but my number one moderator, her name is Shanta, and she, uh, she just, she scrubs all the rude comments on all my videos, so I never yeah. see them. Hmm. Um, I never see the rude comments really, unless, unless, <laughs> and you know this, there's like in your YouTube studio and your YouTube channel, you can see all the hidden comments. Do you have moderators? I Are don't. You? Oh. No. Okay. Well. Whatever. When I, every once in a while, I'll go in there just to, and just oh, see. Oh, you mean when you click to go to that other screen that's like the really bad stuff? Is that like, do you have like uh, comments that have been like put in the category that they're not live, but you can approve them. And then under that, there's. I didn't even know there was that section. Yeah. Uh, oh. I just it's have at the, the very bottom. Like if you want to see like, we think this is really bad stuff. Well, but if you I, I, see I know it, that you tab. It's it. like the unfiltered tab or like the hidden comments. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So like every once in a while I go in there. And then there's Ooh. just like, oh man, I don't you gotta go prepare yourself. I'm just like, all right, I'm getting there. wrecked right now. I need to yeah. see what's happening. <laughs> and but sometimes it's not that bad. But really, someday. what's in there? Because it's usually like this guy, I, F just word. calling me dumb, making fun of my nose, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which doesn't bother me. Thankfully, I just I'm like, why do you care? I never pay attention to anyone's nose. Like, what the heck? <laughs> what's an insult? <laughs> Who cares know. about noses anyway? 
I feel like um, a lot of people just say like, oh, you're not real gamblers. You don't know what you're doing. No, the thing is, is like the thing that bothers me is people think I'm, I'm like, I'm really dumb. And it's just like, I'm playing a slot machine. What do you want from me right like now? Like we're just being silly and having I could talk fun. About we're not talking mm-hmm. about science. I've done in my life, right, right. But you know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> There's no need to be serious and, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Like really it, eloquent or. <laughs> I guess what I figured out throughout the years of doing YouTube is that there's people that come for everything. It's like they'll come for maybe my finance videos, but they might stay for some other reason that is unique to them. Like some people want to have fun and hang out with me. I love those people. Some people just want to learn something. Great. Some people, you know, whatever, spend some time with a friend. Other people are like, they watch just to like either criticize or like chime in like their thing. Like, well, you didn't talk about this. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. There's a lot of things I didn't talk about. I didn't talk about physics. Yeah. There's like, you have two, you have two. It's just like, there's different people have different, like, you know, those people that say you're dumb unquote, like if you were to like share all this knowledge, they'd be like, dude, why are you ruining the entertainment value? Why are you trying to show how smart you are? Like, can't you just be yourself? And like, it it would, well, that's a good example. If someone comes to you to say something physically about you or criticize you, that's just like them their way of like expelling whatever drama or stress they have in their life so it's like it says more about what their mental state is than anything about you so it's like i just accept it for what it is i'm like cool like you had a crappy day probably like yeah yeah. okay yeah i guarantee if you had a different nose you would have still got that comment they would (laughs) they would just something like your ears or they would have been like i don't like that shirt or whatever like they just were out for yeah for blood or whatever yeah no i do i feel like the comments don't bother me too much they used to really annoy me back in the beginning. I'm like, <laughs> then you get used to, you become seasoned. You become so desensitized. Like when it's you so were first okay. blowing up in the hotel content, you're saying that's when yeah. people would say things that got to you. Well, it was the first time I ever experienced anything like that, you know, but I would, I was so good. I used to answer all my comments back in the day and especially the rude ones. I was always so good at answering the rude ones in the most polite way possible. Oh, and I won over so many subscribers. Like I can't, like someone would insult me and be like, Hey man, like, not sure why you're insulting me, but still appreciate you for watching the video. I hope you have a good day. And then, like, <gasps> I used to always answer. Oh, comments you're not like just that. to block the enemy. You're a compliment. No, yeah. the enemy because strategy. A lot of times, what happens is that person will respond, and uh, they'll be like, "Hey, man, like, sorry I did that. Like, that was uncalled for." And you just want a fan over for your response. Like, I've gotten that yeah. a bunch of times. So that was like a, hmm. one of the little things I was That's doing that helped me grow at the beginning. Mm-hmm. But now, like. I'm not so good at answering oh, my I, comments. Obviously, I just want the block route. Maybe I should have been like, thanks, man. Thanks for telling me I try too hard. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I really do. Thanks I'm going to calm it down. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'll what? Just, Maybe yeah. I'll see if I can unblock them right there in my comment. Yeah. But is that what, have you tried that strategy, Andre? In your early days, did you no, reply to no, that? No, I, no, I realized comments? it wouldn't make any difference. I, and oh, yeah. I didn't want to comment on Did someone. you block him or leave him? No, I left him. I left okay. him up. I didn't want to like mm-hmm. comment something. I knew I could have a million different responses that would either yeah. take them down or lift them up. It didn't make a difference. And like, what if I commented on some crazy person's like thing and they like found me and tracked me down? Like there's <laughs> yeah. literally no oh, upside. It's not worth it. Or it's not worth it. No. It's no upside. Mm-hmm. And no. I feel like as somebody who, as like when I watch videos and I see a creator that I like, mm-hmm. if I see comments that are negative, I particularly notice personally when creators respond and I notice they do tend to prioritize the negative comments because mm-hmm. obviously like the negative ones are so much louder than a hundred positive ones. Yeah. yeah. So we tend to like respond and like want to correct them or want something. Right. But when I see that as a viewer of my favorite creators, I'm like, I think less, not of the commenter, but of the creator that I like. Yeah. yeah. I For think less more of them power to the people who that and also being like thinking in my head, like I, I thought you were better, like you were busier, wealthier more successful too good for this like why mm. is this taking up two mm-hmm. seconds of your precious time yeah it You're, makes me yeah. think less of that person even if that 100%. comeback is respectful or yeah. whatever it is i'm like don't bother You're like, like why are you wasting time mm-hmm. don't waste your time <laughs> yeah. you're better than that when you two were in like your early dating phase was that a quality that you noticed in him like the ability to kind of like take some kind of criticism and like respond in a positive Way? Um, I guess so. I feel like, especially at the beginning, I just really appreciated how calm he always was about like everything in general. So Chris has a very he has like a very steady personality. I hid that for a long time. <laughs> I hid that for yeah. a long. <laughs> so good. <that. laughs> no, I would say um, no. You, Christopher is usually really, really chill and normal about everything. 
there is there are going to be things that bother him a lot and at some point that sentence right there (laughs) at some point it's just gonna (laughs) explode if it gets to be too much but it's never gonna be out of the blue like there has to be multiple chances that he has Mm, given people or things that bother him before he that's good like you know it's it's like well deserved if yeah if bumpsy's like I'm pissed. Exactly. Like you're like, well, yeah. you know, something went wrong. Like, yeah. he's not the guy that throws that out there until it's exactly, needed. No. Are you the more analytical one and you're the more creative one? Or how does it work? He, he's definitely the more creative one. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm like, whenever oh. we try to come up with ideas, I'm like, <laughs> everything I say, I'm like, why am I even talking right now? <laughs> 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 he's just more creative about okay, things. So. But, but I'm definitely more organized and better at any like planning yeah. of things yeah because i noticed when we talked about like statistical stuff or numbers yeah you, the spreadsheet yeah the like, spreadsheet <laughs> so you're like yeah i know that yeah, yeah so she, like when you travel are you the one doing the itinerary usually and being like hey we got to get to gate a5 and yeah. then we have to transfer planes yeah usually the more things we have to plan is usually what i take care of and then yeah. he can just focus on being creative and i'm mm-hmm. just kind of there <laughs> for moral support exactly <laughs> That works yeah. out. She's the what, structure. And did you have parents that were kind of that way too? Like, were they? Did they teach you a lot of structure in life? Like, I'm curious for both of you. Like, what your parents' kind of style of psychology was? I think. So. I mean, That's my cool dad question. is an accountant. He's always been like the type of person that if we were late, even for like a family family g- gathering, that if you're ten minutes late, it really doesn't matter. That would ruin his whole day completely. Uh, <laughs> so, he always and it had would a ruin plan. Our whole day too. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so I think I definitely learned from that to be pretty precise on things. I don't really love being like late or if things are unorganized. I just would rather things to be organized. I, I think I can still work fine if things aren't super organized. But, you know, if I could choose. But uh, it would it could create a little bit of anxiety if things are just messy and yeah, unorganized. Yeah, I just am not enjoying it. And if, you don't know what the plan <laughs> is and stuff like that. Yeah, if we don't have a good solid plan, you know. Yeah. But and what were your parents like? Were they the creative type? Were they like hippies and creative no. types? Or were they like, <laughs> are you kind Far of like hippies. anti? Were they more structured? And So, yeah. So my parents were like the most, like, uh, I don't know. They're, they're great parents. And uh, my, my dad did real estate taxes in, in the city. He was the type that got a job and did it for 800 years until he retired um, kind of thing. Just mm-hmm. like never missed a day off. Like um, mm-hmm. the least entrepreneurial like type person although my dad has he is in a band he runs his own rock band oh, and cool. he has been in a rock band since he was 17 and he still is to this and he's day. still in it he's 69 now oh, but even that shows his commitment to even yeah. his like hobby he's, yes yeah. he's very committed um and he was like kind of like the leader of his band so mm-hmm. i think like maybe there's a like a like a little bit of that in me Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of what made me venture out. Do you have strong commitments like that? Like when you started the slot channel, did you kind of know in your head, like, I'm not going to miss a day. Like I'm going to stay oh. with this for years yeah. and make it work. hundred percent. And I also, also always knew I, w- I would somehow, uh, be making videos or movies like, and, and be my own boss kind of thing. Like I would never, ever wanted to be working for someone else. Like I I'd always knew that, but which is different than the rest of my family. <laughs> but we're in a generation it's easier to be an entrepreneur yeah. uh, than ever before so you know and we had the internet they it's didn't different, yeah. but do you have any advice for anyone watching or your younger self to maybe have their own career or do social media yeah well the advice i would give is like it's definitely possible there's you just got to find your niche that's mm-hmm. the main thing um because for me i, w- I was like i want to do this but like wh- what do i make my videos and boom vegas like those are my videos you know, that's what you have to find your niche. Um, uh, you can't just like do the, you, you can't always do the exact thing you have in your head. Like, Oh, I want to be the guy who makes videos about turtles and be the turtle <laughs> vlogger. Like yeah. maybe there's not an audience for turtle vlogging or maybe there already is a huge audience for turtle vlogging. Mm-hmm. Like maybe it's going to be about coffee tables, you know? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, no, so Andre's, how, Andre's how, got like lots of thoughts. I've heard him share his thoughts well, on this. Well, a lot. It's like you, the pain you choose or something like that is how you describe it. How do you it? Um, <laughs> settle for, I guess, what you love doing and what you know people? I guess the whole thing is like if you draw a Venn diagram, it's like a circle of what you love, what people want to see, and then you exist in the middle. Exactly. Yeah. And as a creative, I sem- sometimes think it's hard to to like compromise there. You it always want to be selfish yeah. with like what you want, which I know for you is like traveling stuff. Yeah. yeah. But 
Yeah, which is interesting how you're combining and how you resolve that. Like you're combining the slot stuff with your traveling, so it kind of does both. Exactly. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah, and I think that's how you kind of be successful in, on the internet. Unless like if you're a gamer and you love gaming. Well, even gamers, they, so like gamers, they have to be to like, they have to be really um, skillful at their game, right? It's really hard to get to the top. But even gamers, if they make it, they'll get burnt out on a video game, but then the rest of their audience doesn't want to see them play other games. They only want to see them play that mm. one game. Right. So they're mm. also kind of in that dilemma. But so it's definitely a balancing act, but you, like you said, the Venn diagram makes sense. You have to kind of find it. Like if you love making videos, maybe figuring out how to make videos that are really helpful to people like your your videos finance videos mm -hmm. stuff like that yeah well i can tell like when you did the formula one video it, it did feel a little different than your other videos like you were still yeah. talking about finance but it kind of had this sense like yeah. i had this experience on the strip and here's my right. feeling about it mm -hmm. and here's what i learned yeah versus some of the other ones that are that seem like you're joining the conversation for sure in a different way but do you guys have any other stories anything you else want to say anything you want to mention that you feel like you're like mm, this hasn't come up but i want to say it i will i just want to say that i don't recommend anyone start a slot channel and i'm not saying that Bro, because come on I, so, <laughs> i'm come sorry on. i have to be honest Bro, i have to be honest because no because it, gambling is serious and it, you could lose a ton of money it's really dark the only reason I'm successful with the slot channel is because I had grown a base of Vegas lovers. Like a previous audience. That likes casino stuff, and they watch my stuff. Um, and, you know, so I just, I, I get worried because people are seeing more slot channels blow up, and, and they think, like, oh, I, why can't I do that exact thing? And I just don't want to see them, like, lose a ton of money. Yeah. You know? No, that is, that is a good disclaimer because there is yeah. a good chance you put up a YouTube video and you spend lots of money on the slot machine and the yeah. casino takes all of that money yeah. and you do not get that money back in revenue. I would say unless you're actually so. passionate because a lot of slot content creators, they actually were gamblers. So for them, it's kind of like either way they're going to go gamble. So might as well make a video and possibly make money from it, right? But... If you're not particularly into gambling, the the only problem is starting, if you don't already have an audience, starting a new channel, you know, that's really expensive. It could get really expensive. So that's, you know, if you're not particularly into gambling, starting a different type of channel that where the expenses aren't so high might mm -hmm. be easier, at least to start off, you know? I'll take that <laughs> advice. <laughs> oh, Andre's out. But... I don't mean to end on a bummer, but no. Like no, I, every, I, think, I think it's important because it is true. Like we've been sitting here talking about like how much money it makes and like yeah, how fun it is mm -hmm. and how easy, but it's not. And there's way, way more people yeah. who are not succeeding at it. And most likely new people will have to deal with that. Yeah. First. And at the end of every one of our slot videos, we always say like, you know, be careful gambling. Uh, yeah. You know, we lose all the time. Like, yeah. uh, you know, we always kind of. We, we're, we're always just saying gamble responsibly. Because at the end of the day, I guess we, we never, like, we just want our videos to be entertaining and to possibly, like, if somebody doesn't live close to a casino but they enjoy gambling, they can watch it. Or if somewhat, somebody doesn't want to risk their own money, they can just watch us and kind of, it could help them that way, right? Right. We just never want people to think, like, oh, you know, we win all the time or uh, gamble, it's great. Like, no, it's definitely, mm. the only reason why we're doing it is because we're able to make money off of the videos. Otherwise, we would never play slots, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so, it's so ironic. So I'm we the just want people influencer. to really understand that. Like, yeah. You know. Yeah, 10 grand a month is a lot of money. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. I mean you have to yeah. I mean, you have to deal with that, too, because people can lose money in the stock market, and you yeah. always have to be like, Andre has, has to be like, like, this is just me and my story. Yeah. I'm not telling you to do anything. Yeah. I'm not a financial advisor. Right. Yeah. Yeah, stocks and slots are like the same thing. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Basically. Yeah, there's risk in both. You know? Guaranteed yeah. loss sure. and... Yeah, for slot machines though. Yeah. Well, cool. I appreciate it. Thank you guys. Yeah. For thank coming you so out. much. That yeah, was awesome. Thank you for the conversation. Us. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it was good. I've never done a podcast really. We didn't have any. You've never done a podcast. This is your first one. Like a few, like a while ago. That Dang. Didn't get many views. Okay. Yeah. Well, cool. Breaking Check out the links below. Yeah. Find their channel. <laughs>